Hello and welcome to the game highlights for the third game in the Google DeepMind Challenge match. I'm Chris Garlock with the American Go eJournal, joined by Michael Redman, Nine Don Professional. This was the key match, although actually every match has been key, but this one particularly so because Lee Zadal had his back to the wall. He was down 2-0, needed one win to keep his hopes alive, and that didn't happen. Right. But we're going to take a look. He had a heck of a game, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, let's take a look and see what happened in the, uh, in the game. Yeah, this was a very exciting game with a lot of fighting, and I think Lee Siddle, um he played a fighting opening, really, um, and played true to his style. And actually, he played some very powerful fighting in the game, so I think it would be very difficult for most players to beat him it, um, what, the way he played today. As with the other two matches, it was incredibly entertaining. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. And right here we see Black playing the high uh, Chinese Fuseki, which is a bit unusual nowadays. Mm. But it um, is a Fuseki, an opening in which Lee Sedol can show his power. So it's, um, I think it's um, even more than, much more than the first two games, actually. It's sort of true to the way that Lee Sedol likes to play. And the, the opening that in which he will... Um, be a formidable player. And he had done an all-nighter, uh, not, uh, not last night, but the night before. We yes. had the day off yesterday, mm -hmm. stayed up until 6 a.m., going over it with, I think, four or five uh, other top Everybody's pros. His friends, some, they were top pros, yeah. Right. Well, um, it's good that he didn't do it last night. <laughs> um, and it's a kind of a natural thing to really uh, go into this kind of intense study overnight after a loss, uh, a loss like that, because mm. it's it's going to be pretty hard to sleep anyway, because you're going to be all hyped up, and also the fact that you're trying, your mind will be keep um, snapping back into the game, right? And uh, keeping trying, you you keep trying to find find out why you lost, right? So you have to completely um, go through that and find your mistakes, and then sometimes you're satisfied to the point that you can go to sleep, but. Um, there is a point in there, his going through it all night and trying to find some weaknesses maybe in mm -hmm. AlphaGo. I don't think he did. Um, so um, in this game, Black is playing a Moyo. That might be part of the plan. Uh, it also sort of works with Lee Sedol's Go. So I think there's uh, nothing wrong with what he's doing here. Okay. This move that White played, AlphaGo, it's, it's not un unheard of. It's maybe a bit unusual for White to be playing this because White's sort of inviting Black to in invade somewhere around here mm -hmm. and make trouble with... But um, since White does have these two stones in the background, um, the fight here is going to be fightable for White. So White's sort of inviting Black in and asking Black to start a fight, which is... That's the part that's unusual um, for White to be doing this. Uh, but the local fight will be an advantage for White because White does have these two stones to back up White okay. in the area. Uh, now it's about time for White to jump into Black's Moyo. Um, some players, um, very few actually, but some players would be continuing to build up White's Moyo and letting Black to build Black's Moyo up. Um, generally, just because of the one move difference, Black playing first, uh, Black's Moyo his territorial framework tends to be bigger. Mm -hmm. And quite often if the players play the same number of moves on the sides, then the final move for Black will be somewhere in the center of the board, and that will, will really make Black's uh, framework much, much bigger than White's. So this is a good time for White to sort of break that pattern and jump into the Moyo. So White played a two-space jump. At this point, the normal way to continue attacking White would be to play something like this, and maybe a Kosumi for White too. Uh, this way, sure. and then here. Um, black is taking territory along the side. White is still not um, safe. White would continue with something like this, um, and then there would be a lot of variations, but you can see that Black is taking territory while threatening White, and then after, uh, maybe at this point, or maybe after a while, Black would be switching to the lower side or the right side. Um, this would be a more conventional way for Black to continue. Mm -hmm. um, the move that Black did play, uh, this move here, is a very aggressive move. It's actually a sort of a scary way for Black to be playing because um, when White does as White did in the game, the Kosumi there, um, this, this White is just playing to make a life for this group. 
and it's sort of going to scoop out all the black territory in the immediate area. Um, and so black has to get a good attack going. Otherwise, the, um, a normal kind of a t an attack will not be good enough to make up for the sacrifice that black is making in, in the territory on the sides here. And the, both sides will be sort of disappearing, as we will see as the moves con continue. Do you, th do you think that uh, Lee Sedol uh, planned to just go ahead and, and fight you know, his style from... Um... Right, well, um, I think he could have easily played the Kosumi instead, but um, the attachment here to uh, divide white into two and try to get a decisive attack is sort of true to his style. Okay. Um, it might have been... It's, a, it's sometimes considered an overplay because mm. um, the cornerstones are not um, all that strong okay. and white can use that to reinforce the white group. Um, so most players would hesitate to do that. Um, but uh, I think if Lee Settle did that against most pros, he would be able to make it work. And so it's pretty impressive that it didn't work in this game. It shows how strong AlphaGo is. Yes, that's right. And now the corner is a bit weak, so Black added one move to the corner. And that sort of stops White from playing something on this side later, too. So White moves out. Yes. And Black pushes. And covering here is a good shape. It, um, well, it's sort of a natural shape that mm. any pro would choose, actually. Because extending here, and Black can play here, allowing White's shape to fall apart like this would be very bad for White. It would right. be very bad shape, and it would be just too heavy. So this is natural. Um, he plays this exchange before jumping out. So this is a very nice, a natural sequence. Um, it's not really uh, anything special, but it's just a, a sequence of good moves that really have a nice kind of um, feeling to them. When we were reviewing this, uh, you just, you, you really liked this entire 20, 30 move sequence coming out of this. You, you kept saying it was beautiful. Well, White's just playing sort of very natural looking mm. moves. Uh, there's nothing, no extra, it's not as if White is sort of um, muscling up and trying to do something special. White's just playing what, what look like normal moves and in the process is sort of refuting Black. Like if Black um, plays something like this, then White's going to get out in the center. Mm -hmm. And these, these stones are beginning to look like they are having no problem. They're, gonna, they're beginning to look like a strong group. And so it's a very smooth way for white to sort of move out into the center. Black continued the attack with this. Uh, and here. It's yes. this move, right? That's right. I love this move. That move is it's already looking like it could be sort of like a winning move mm -hmm. because it's, um, it's much more effective than the slower moves like right. this or somewhere around here. It's much more effective when black plays a defensive move like this and white can play something on the outside, getting a great um, sequence of moves on the outside and just punishing black here, while black has to play another move to actually connect them on the side. Yeah, black would have to put another move right. in there. So black counterattacks, white pushes, and again, oh sorry, that's me, yeah. And again, uh, going directly against the black group would be a bit dangerous, so black's, white sliding here is another nice move. Yeah. Um, at this point, we're just talking about really good moves. It's not as if um, human players don't play moves like this sure. too, but the whole sequence here is sort of leading to that, and it's it's the sort of effortless way that AlphaGo is setting up this good position, and the game is already looking good for White. So basically, uh, where did Black go wrong? The only move that I can find that uh, I don't like is the attachment move, attachment. the original okay. ta attachment move. Um, so um, the ne necessity of taking it back so far is just sort of illustrating how strong AlphaGo is. Right. Um, because um, one mistake early in the game uh, usually doesn't have that effect. Um, and so the, the, the way it can uh, punish that with such normal looking moves, which it, that's really the hallmark of a very strong player. White escapes. And now Black has all of these stones that are not really very well connected. So that's why Black has to play a number of very slow moves here just to connect his group. White connects, and black connects. And you can see black is being forced to play sort of dame points, useless points, just to save his stones. And then white jumped here, um, and here, and white connected once. And this is still a very complicated fight. Like this white group um, uh, here, and maybe in that area, if we combine those two, that white has a potential to make one eye maybe. Uh, but that's a potential one eye. 
White needs one eye elsewhere. So basically, white cannot afford to be surrounded here. Black also has a weak group here. Mm -hmm. So it's really, and black has a weak group here. Um, because of the white stones that are friendly for white in the area, this is already looking like a very difficult fight for black. Mm -hmm. Here and here and here. White jumps. And with this exchange, this group is cut off from this group. This white group is still not settled, really. This white group is not settled. But on a whole, we see that the, the black groups seem to be weaker than the white groups in general. So I'm, I, I think that this looks like it's a, a fight that is advantageous for white. Mm -hmm. uh, black plays here. This is threatening to connect underneath, basically. Um, at this point, I, I played a move, uh, white played a move that I thought was a bit slack. That's this, this one. one. Yes. Yeah. Um, I would have been tempted just to keep on attacking block, black. Right. And these three stones are really so, so weak that I think that white could have helped it, uh, could have done it this way. Um, there is a, a lot of danger just because there are so many weak groups floating around. If black can find some way to play some forcing moves against this white group and maybe close this in, it looks a bit unlikely to okay. me. But um, uh, I think that when AlphaGo plays a move like this that looks a bit slack, um, it actually means that AlphaGo has already assessed the position and decided that white's ahead, uh, or right. AlphaGo is ahead, that right. is. In this case, it's white. And that uh, AlphaGo can afford to uh, let black off the hook just a little bit uh, because AlphaGo um, already has control of the game. I wonder if this is something that we can learn from AlphaGo uh, already, is that uh, by, by doing that, simplifying the game, mm -hmm. um, I mean, obviously, has a much more you know, stronger look ahead and so forth. Well, I think that actually uh, after, um, I think people can make the judgment, like professionals can make the judgment that this is uh, looking good for white. Okay. Um, but uh, I think that I would have trouble um, saying that this is the safer course to victory because it takes, it's, even in this case, it takes a lot of doing to take this all the way to win. We, we saw all sorts of complicated stuff at yes, the end of the did. game. Yes, we did. And um, that kind of stuff will happen. And so in some ways, if White can win the immediate fight here right. after playing this move, then it will be a quick end and much more easy for White to less stressful. Uh, less time. But of course, Alpha, AlphaGo doesn't mind about Not that. Not an issue. <laughs> so white plays here. Black plays once here to make a weakness in white's wall. White has to answer here. And then black uh, connects underneath. So black is, uh, white pushed through once. Black is sort of being let off the hook here because these stones are connected. If black plays one more move, say for instance here, then these stones will have a live shape. Um, so black, uh, white jumps here. Let's just do a few more moves, mm -hmm. uh, like this, and white pushes. Um, at this point, uh, black is alive with one more move. White stones still do not, do not have eyes, so white had, black does have some potential attack. Um, ideally, black should be able to use that attack to sort of break open the, the side here, in which case it seems black might have a chance, but actually, since black's territories on the whole are pretty small, I think actually it, it's already uh, looking good for AlphaGo. The game goes on for quite a while. We yeah. encourage you to look at the, uh, the full stream uh, on the web uh, to get all the uh, details. But I think, first of all, thank you, Michael, uh, for a great commentary. And congratulations uh, to AlphaGo and the entire uh, DeepMind team uh, for a, a great win. There are two more rounds to go, and I'm sure that Lee Sedal will be uh, continuing to bring his A game, and we will be there uh, as well. Yes. So thanks again. Thank you.